So this quarter we've been covering heredity and how physical traits like eye color, hair color, whether you have hair on your knuckles, uh, are things that are passed down from generation to generation. Uh, we know that that stuff, those pieces of information are stored in DNA. So the question is this, how does DNA go from something like this to something as complicated as this? Today we're going to be talking about how DNA and RNA work together with ribosomes to build biological structures. This process is called protein synthesis and it's responsible for the creation of enzymes, polypeptides, things like blood cells, and structures in your body like bones, skin, muscle, even your hair and fingernails are made almost entirely of proteins. In fact, every single biotic component of this planet owes a little bit of thanks to protein synthesis. Oh, hey, I, I can see your house. You're on YouTube. Say hi, you're famous. Uh, by the end of today's lesson, we'll understand how proteins are made in the cell. You'll even be able to build proteins yourself. So, can we build it? Yes, we can. So, here's today's lesson essential questions. What is the central dogma? What is protein synthesis? What is transcription? What enzymes are involved in transcription? What is translation? What's the end product of translation? Why are these processes critical for life? And where are my keys? Has anybody seen my keys? Where are my keys? DNA creates RNA, and RNA makes amino acids, polypeptides, uh, and active proteins. This idea was introduced by one of the people who helped discover DNA, Francis Crick. Uh, Crick gave it a name. This, this idea has a name, and it's called the central dogma. It's one of the big ideas in biology. Um, it looks like this in a nutshell, and it describes how proteins are made, uh, aka protein synthesis. Uh, it's pretty simple, right? It's a very easy diagram to remember. So let's jump right into it. First, let's focus on this part of the central dogma. Transcription. Transcription is the creation of RNA. So uh, transcription makes RNA copies of a DNA segment through an enzyme called RNA polymerase. All of this happens in the nucleus. This is really important to remember. So here's how it's done. First, a section of the DNA molecule unwinds and separates to form an open area. Then, a chemical called RNA polymerase comes along and synthesizes an mRNA molecule, really similar to how we made complements for our DNA strands during DNA replication. After a few modifications, we have an mRNA molecule that consists of a single strand of a gene coding sequence. Remember, transcription happens to make RNA. That's the goal of this process, is to make RNA. Transcription takes DNA and transcribes it into RNA. One way to think of this is the other description of transcription. Um, think of a courtroom stenographer. Those are the guys that type really quick and listen to what's being said in a courtroom. Um, they're taking spoken language and turning it into written language. The message stays the same, but there are still some minor changes that happen along the way. It isn't an exact copy is my point. That's what transcription is. It's making a slightly different copy from what you started out with. So what changes during transcription? Well, RNA is a different chemical than DNA. So RNA has all of the same nucleotides that DNA does, except for thymine. Thymine is replaced with a chemical called uracil in RNA. RNA is single-stranded, unlike DNA, so it kind of looks like half of a DNA molecule. RNA also has a different function than DNA, and we'll get into this in a little bit, so hang on. So let's transcribe some DNA first. Uh, let's say we have this DNA segment lying around, ready to be transcribed. So we have AGA, CCG, and GTA. This works exactly the same as doing a DNA replication problem, except one thing changes. 
we're getting rid of the thymines and replacing them with uracil. RNA molecules do not have any T's in them. They have U's only. So I want you to pause this video and see if you can transcribe this yourself following those rules. Remember, there's no T's, there's U's. I can wait. How'd you do? Let's see if we got the right answer. So AGA's complement with mRNA would be UCU. Wherever those T's would have been, we replaced them with U's. CCG would be GGC, same way we would do with DNA replication. GTA would give us CAU. So we have our RNA complement. Specifically, this is mRNA. All right, so this whole time I've been talking about RNA, uh, but I haven't really told you what it does. So what does RNA do? Uh, we covered this vaguely in our last unit, but RNA helps synthesize, regulate, and process proteins. So it's critical for all sorts of life processes. Without it, well, you... So there are three types of RNA, each of which has a different job. So there's rRNA, or ribosomal RNA, and it forms the basis of ribosomes. And ribosomes basically are protein factories. If you paid attention during the organelles unit, you remember this. There's mRNA, which is messenger RNA, sort of the mailman of the cell. It carries chemical messages to and from the nucleus. Uh, they're required for expressing genes specifically. Finally, there's tRNA, which transfers amino acids to ribosomes from the nucleus. This is critical for gene expression and protein synthesis. It's going to be very, very important in our next step. Uh, amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, and so we need to make those. And the next step is... Translation. Okay, so we've used DNA to make RNA. Now we're going to use RNA to make proteins. Translation is the last step in the central dogma. Uh, the creation of proteins is directed by an mRNA template that we made earlier, and we're going to use that in our next example. The information contained in these nucleotide sequences uh, come in three-letter triplets that we call codons. Each codon stands for a type of amino acid. There are about 20 amino acids out there, and we have a big complex chart that can help us figure out what each of these triplets stands for. I don't expect you to remember the names of every single amino acid, uh, but I do want you to learn how to use a codon chart. When you translate something from one language to another, you're changing the message to a completely different type of information. Uh, the message for the most part might be intact, but information can be lost or changed during this process. If you've ever had to translate for your parents over the phone on the fly, I'm sure you can relate. In biology, the steps of translation are this. So first, a ribosome binds to mRNA at a specific area. Then, the ribosome starts matching tRNA anticodons to the mRNA codon sequence that was already made. Each time a new tRNA comes into contact with the ribosome, the amino acid that it was carrying gets added to a polypeptide or a protein chain. And that's it. I bet by now you're an expert at finding complementary strands, whether they're DNA or RNA. Well, what we're going to do is a translation problem, and this is a different process. To do translation, we need to use a codon chart. We're not finding complementary letters anymore. What we're doing is we're trying to decode words into a different language. If we look at our codon chart here, you can see that it's a circle, right? And with this circle, we start at the middle and we move outwards. So we're going to use the same mRNA sequence that we had before. So let's say we're looking at uh, UUA. If we start at the center where U is, we'll move outwards to the next U, and then we'll go to the last letter, A, and that'll get you. I want you to see if you can figure out what the other two codes are, UAC and CGG. 
If you can do it on your own, you're set for this week. If you still need help, you can always come and ask me or watch this video again. I'll give you a little bit of time to figure it out. Okay, that's it. Super easy, right? All right, so by now we've talked about what the central dogma is, which is DNA makes RNA and RNA makes proteins. We've discovered the mysteries of protein synthesis, ribosomes do it basically. Uh, we determined what enzymes are involved in transcription, it's RNA polymerase. And we found out what the end product of transcription is. Uh, we know what translation is, it's when RNA makes proteins. And we found out what RNA's end product was, which is proteins. Uh, we figured out why this matters as well, because you're made of proteins and without those things you're not getting made anymore. Uh, we also figured out where, actually, we didn't, where are my keys? Has anybody seen my keys? Where are my keys? Your keys? Are you being furrowed right now? Oh, it's, it's a joke. It's a joke. All right. One take.